video today is going to be all about work paper referencing. So what exactly is work paper referencing? It's some sort of organizational system for all of our audit documentation. So that audit documentation we call work papers and sometimes you might see it shortened to WP for short. Um, so work papers can be ones that we've been preparing, so prepared by the auditor, or they can be information obtained from the client or other sources. So what sort of things might come from the client? Meeting minutes. You could also have things like invoices, um, a list of employees. The other sources of information, you might get a bank statement. You might have supplier price lists. So all of these will form work papers that need to be kept within the audit documentation in some way, shape or form. Now, we need to have some sort of organisational system for this documentation. That organisational system could be alphabetical, all right, but it would make it quite difficult. Instead, we tend to see numeric organizing systems for work papers. So a common one might be using uh, assets. Start with the number 100. All right, so one, zero, zero. Liabilities might be two. And uh, equity might be three. Any revenue items could be four, and any expenses could be five. This is different in every single firm, uh, but whatever system we use, we need to make sure that we stick to it. And your audit firm will often uh, set the system for your numbering of your work papers. Now, of course, a lot of this is electronic, but we're going to go through the paper method for organizing work papers, but the, the principle is the same in an electronic system. So have a, let's have a look at drawing two particular work papers. Now the work paper reference is always in the top right hand corner. I'm just going to use 100. Okay there. We know that from previous files or videos we need to know who prepared the work paper and who reviewed the work paper as well. But this one here is going to be an audit program for cash and there's going to be a list of things the auditor needs to do. Now one of those things is going to be to examine the bank statement. Okay, so we go away And we get ourselves a copy of the bank statement from the bank. Now, what you'll notice is that it has no work paper reference number. So what I'll do is I'll give it one. I've just used 101 there to keep it sequential. It's a whole lot of information on the bank statement that we might care to look at. Now, what happens if 
I find something interesting on the bank statement and I want to record the results of that somewhere else. Well, I find whatever's interesting and I tell the reader, go have a look at work paper 100 for more information. And on work paper 100, I say, for more juicy stuff, go to work paper 101. So the little brackets that you see there contain the work paper number inside and we use those in a method we call cross-referencing. Right. This is important in the audit documentation. Now here we've only got two documents, but what if we had hundreds or thousands of papers? We need to cross-reference so that here for this particular test, the auditor might need to go look at work paper 205. Um, so that allows us to make sure that we can search for the relevant documentation within the audit easily and quickly. The other thing to note about cross-referencing is that cross-referencing needs to be, oh, my pen is dying, two-way. That is, we should be able to navigate from either document between the two, rather than just one uh, work paper reference without the other. If I want to start at the evidence and work backwards, or if I want to start with the audit program and follow it to the evidence, I want to make sure I have those work paper references in both places to minimise any error or miscommunication and maximise the speed with which I can move and look through my audit file.